on and checking us out. Uh, again, if you have not subscribed to Alza's Nursery, make sure you do that as we like to share a lot of our tips and tricks that we have been learning that have been successful for us uh, in addition to hopefully being successful for you. Today I wanted to get on real quick and explain to you how I have been accomplishing doing this cleft lip. So I will be piecing together some information. Hopefully uh, you guys will be able to follow along what I'm kind of explaining in a relatively easy manner. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to send me an email. I'd be happy to answer anything. Uh, you can also make a comment and I will get back to you as quickly as possible. Okay, so the little kit that we've been using is the Anna Awake Kit by Bountiful Baby. So here we are, little Anna. We've got a nice little triangular shape uh, cut out, I should say. It's not really cut out, obviously, but um, we've got that nice little area sculpted out so that it would resemble a cleft lip in a much more realistic manner. I had accomplished this by melting the kit using believe it or not, a meat, therm meat thermometer. <laughs> so I had heated up the tool just enough so it wouldn't damage the vinyl. Uh, it wouldn't um, be overly hot, but it wouldn't be too cold where it's not gonna do anything. So that was the biggest trick, trying to find the happy medium on what the perfect temperature would be. That, I cannot tell you guys, that is something that you have to kind of figure out with on your own with whatever tool you decide to use. I had taken this little peanuts photos that we are using as a reference to decide what shape of a cleft that we were going to do. Once I decided the shape, I had to find a tool that would work to get me started. So what I did is I basically took that tool and heated it up and I had melted uh, starting at like the nose area here and I rocked it back. So just for instance, let's see here. I don't know if you'll be able to see it very well. <laughs> I suppose I can show you a pencil, but it might not, might not be turn out the way I am hoping. So when I took my tool, I took the tool at an angle see if I can go like this so I'm gonna I very lightly had touched down right at the tip of the nose and I rocked it down so that is kind of my daughter's getting home from from wherever I was gonna say school that's so funny she's 20 years old so no not school um, sorry guys but anyways uh, so I to take on that tool place that tip of the tool right at the base of the nostril at an angle, about a 45 degree angle, and then I used that in a rocking motion. When I went down, I kind of rocked back and forth to create this triangular shape. And then I was having issues with it cooling down too fast, so I had to constantly heat it back up. And the only way I was able to do that is I took my tool and I literally held it over the flame on the stove. Uh, in order to heat it up. But then I had the challenge of, okay, I'm getting black marks on, like the soot almost, on the meat thermometer. So I had to heat it up, quickly wipe it off, and then go in and try to sculpt this as best as I could before it got too cold. It got to be an incredible challenge, and it took a lot of tries to get it to work. Um, I did it in that manner because I wanted it to have a little bit of a softer um, depth in the top up here because of our portrait baby did not have a severe cleft lip, but I needed the depth more towards the bottom. There's that gap here that we wanted to emphasize. All right, so in order to do that, we had to bring in a couple other um, aspects. Once I got done doing the tool using that meat thermometer, the heated meat thermometer to, to melt that vinyl, I had to go in and do a little 
polishing slash texture work. Uh, and that was where the tricky part came in because I had to go in and kind of clean up some of the areas that were overly rigid that I didn't get quite perfect when I was trying to shape it before it cooled down. So I took a Dremel and I used various Dremel bits until I found the right one to go in same manner and start at, start at the, the base of the nostril or the bottom of the nostril, rocking it down and dragging it down. So like when I've got the Dremel, I'm like very lightly touching through the top here to do any of that work that I wanted to soften that or to polish it out a little bit if it got too rough. And then as I went down further, again, I rocked it down a little bit and then I kind of rocked back and forth, creating that depth. All right, now how did I do that without damaging the bottom lip? That was the tricky part. So inevitably, I turned the baby's head the opposite direction and I went in, I squeezed that lovely little, the kit's mouth, okay? So you're squeezing it to, to open her up a little bit. And then I'm taking my Dremel and I'm go, working backwards, so to speak. I went in at the crease of the lip and I'm going back and forth 45 degree angle still because I wanted more depth in this area 45 degree angle through here creating that little bit of a triangular shape to meet up with what I already did because we already started up through here Dremel was done here we kind of stopped as we got through here because we're getting too close to that bottom lip so flip it over, go in with your Dremel. After you pinch the cheeks, you're going to take your Dremel at a 45 degree angle. You're going to go in at the crease of the lip line and very carefully you're going to kind of do like a rocking motion and then drag your, your Dremel down a little bit and bring it towards the nostril. But you only want to go up to where you meet the area you already completed. When you get to the lip, the very bottom of the lip, now that is the very tricky part because if you're not careful, you're going to end up going right through the lip or the, through the mouth and opening up the mouth entirely. And we don't want to do that. So be very careful that you're kind of being mindful of how deep you're pressing into the vinyl. Otherwise, it's going to get way too thin and you're going to have problems. So that is basically how I got the shape I wanted. The next step we needed to do is we needed to give it color and give it um, depth. Ultimately, I decided to go with Prismas. Super simple, right? Not a problem. What I will do when I'm using Prismas is I will basically use Prismas kind of like um, a guide. I'll create the texture and the look that I want but then I will go over with powders to kind of really work it into the vinyl. And then after I have worked it in really good with vinyls and I have set the powders, uh, I will go through and I will do like a fine mist of my matte varnish. And then I will start painting on top of that. So lots of layers to get it to really come to life. What I had ended up doing is I ended up using um, multiple or multiple colors in different areas. So first off, let me get my lovely pairs that I did. Um, so the black cherry, you can kind of see the number on there if you need it. The crimson lake, sorry. Mm -hmm. This one is dark purple. And last but not least, I did black raspberry. Okay. With bringing the kit to life, I wanted to create that, that highlighted in area and the more area with depth. In order to accomplish that, I had started out with 
I'm going in. Let's see here which color I can't see. I'm reading them upside down. I got to turn. I went through with the dark purple. And I had created kind of my guide or my outline through here. And I did the whole lip. Once I did the lip and I created that line right through the here, I followed where I kind of created that shape, created it through here. This area, I kind of have to do a little bit of, because you're not going to have that real defined line you as you would like normally on your lips. So you have to kind of create the line you want to see. Yes, I have it carved out in kind of a triangular shape here, but it's not going to be a definite line there so or a ridge. So I ended up using the dark purple to create like that lip line area. When I use Prismas, I do not just use Prismas and write on the kit and walk away from it. I work it into the vinyl. The purpose of the Prismas is to work the color into the vinyl not necessarily to draw with, if that makes sense. When I did that, I would go back with my little Q-tip and I literally, I worked this in really, really well until it was all that mark was completely softened and you really can't get it off anymore unless you use like um, a dry erase, not dry erase, I'm sorry. Um, a little sponge which actually does help take off the Prisma pencils on vinyl much better than your typical eraser. Uh, this seems to leave a little bit more of a mark on the vinyl which I'm not crazy about. Sometimes I'll use this but not often. I'll usually use this guy here but I don't have to do that very often. Work that, that Prisma pencil color in very, very good because you don't want a stark line. You just want a little bit of a guide and you want a little bit of that depth. After I had done that, I, when I, oh, that's the other thing too. After I had done the line and I had worked it in really well, I worked it into the actual lip itself, avoiding this portion right through here. I want to leave this a little bit lighter so that's kind of like where the baby gets that little white mark from drinking their bottles or what have you. Kind of has a little uh, blister area there. So we wanted that to, to stay more white. So we avoided this area. We worked the pencil in really well and dragged it up into the actual lip itself just to kind of give that base color to it. After I had done that, I had gone in and I had taken my black cherry and I had gone in and started coloring. Not necessarily coloring, coloring, but I wanted to create a little bit more depth right in through the actual cleft area. Again, softening it up really well with your Q-tip to the point where you're, you're not really picking up a lot more color. It's more stained into the vinyl. And you're not doing the entire area. I did the black cherry area, ugh, excuse me, the black cherry um, more in the bottom area here. If you can kind of see, I'm trying to point to it and do this at the same time. So right in through here, I did that black cherry avoiding that little area right in through here and not so much up here. Then I take had taken the Crimson Lake, that red red, and I created a darker area. I had gone in almost like a tiny, tiny triangular shape right through here, put that color down just in through here. Then I went back with my Q-tip and I worked it in really, really well. And when I'm working in the color, I work in a circular fashion. So that way it kind of does that blending until it's the texture that I want to see. Once I get the depth created, and I actually, I don't even know if I use the black raspberry, or I'm sorry, not the black raspberry. I gotta look again. I, you know, I forget my color sometimes. 
This is a great way to, to use your mat, too. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, so I know that, and I know that one. I don't know if you guys can see that. If it was, I think it was this one. Yeah, these two are really similar, you guys. No, it was this one. So this one is the black raspberry. So I, I apologize. I used the black raspberry for doing more of the outline. So I, I'll show you. Black raspberry is going to have that darker color. It's still in a purpley kind of tone, but it's going to be darker. And then we've got black cherry, which is going to create more shadow. Still the purple. You can kind of see the difference. And then to finish it off, we did the uh, Crimson Lake. When you're layering these, it's going to look natural. Obviously, you don't want to draw, you know, doing this triangular business and then going back with this one and I'm just going to do this triangle and then I'm just going to do the bottom here. I do do it lightly kind of over all of the colors to get it to blend. We don't want that line. We don't want it to look like it's drawn on. We want it to be tinted. That's the point of these is to tint the vinyl, not necessarily to draw on the vinyl. So the darker colors, and you can use whatever color you want, but this is just kind of the colors that I've used. Um, the darker colors are going to be more of your lining and shadowing and the red is going to be kind of accenting the color and creating a little bit more depth but giving it a little bit more of that realism that's how we got that portion i don't know if you guys can see it really good on the camera here but this portion right underneath my q-tip here that we want to see as much depth as possible just in that area all right guys, now that we have created our initial look using our Prisma pencils, the next step that I would use is I would use my powders. Unfortunately, the coastal powders are no longer available, so you'll have to kind of figure out what powders will work best for you. Uh, when you are shopping for powders, um, basically this is an eyeshadow kind of a powder, but it is matte, make sure they're matte. Uh, this color line was super highly pigmented, so that is why it works so well. Um, using the powders is strictly to stain the vinyl. It's not necessarily to um, create the look itself. It's to stain the vinyl, to give it the undertones, to make everything more soft and have it more depth or highlighted areas. It's not necessarily to draw or paint and create a defined look if that makes sense um, but again that's my my technique that's my way of doing it everybody else is different um, you do what you want to do it's totally fine there's no right or wrong way but this is how I use the powders I use it just as a solely as to stain the vinyl and create that undertones and to soften everything up a little bit so that it looks more realistic um, when I was using the powders, I used several different colors, so you will have to figure out what colors work well for you with whatever powder you decide to go with. Um, there is a couple of brands that I have um, been hearing a lot about that have been very successful for people. So with the Coastal Powders, the colors that I used, I use Fine Wine for when I'm doing my overall kind of base meaning the highlighted areas, or I shouldn't say the highlighted areas, but the beginning or the initial lining. And again, I'm not creating this line and then leaving it a defined line. I'm working it into the vinyl really well and using my little Q-tips to soften that line, but I want that kind of definition through here. And then I'm going through and I'm accenting that line, doing highlighting and low lighting. With my low lighting, I'm creating shadows by using the Wild Raisin, which is more of like a darker purple color. 
and whoops these are so great because they're magnets so they don't I don't have to worry about losing them uh, I also the pomegranate red oops, which is this guy and then I'm also using this one looks like white but it's really not white it is a pink this one is the powder pink so it looks just like a white but it's a very subtle off-white and then I'm using the olive which is great for like the middle to the bottom portion of this bottom lip just to give it a little bit of depth and through the center here I'm also using my yellow oops this yellow is the sunbeam yellow and that's this color and that's creating more of your highlighting effect and last but not least what I've used was the chocolatier which is this one and that's almost like a brownish color and that is for the most inner areas creating the most depth so just think of your lighter colors as for highlighting your darker colors as for shading pretty simple what you guys decide to use is going to be entirely up to you you're going to use that in the same fashion that we did the pencils you're going to want to leave that highlighted areas right in through this area through here right above the lip on each side so right on oops sorry right on this side through here and right on this side through here right in through this portion of the cheek and in this portion of the cheek uh, the sides over through here we want to highlight a little bit and then I want to created more depth so using the darker colors I did right underneath the bottom through here of the lip right in through the center here and in the center center portion of the mouth around the creases around the nose and just at the very center of where the cleft would be and then underneath and right in through this kind of ridge in through here um, what you guys decide to do is entirely up to you this is just me doing my way um, be creative uh, there is no right or wrong way but I typically stick to that fashion the lighter colors to highlight the darker colors to low light um, I try to stick with mainly Oh, I don't know if I told you the I also use blue too. Let me show you that one. This one is the cornflower blue. And again, unfortunately, these powders are no longer available, but you can um, find other powders that would be equivalent to it by making sure that it's a highly pigmented powder and they are matte. Don't make make sure they're not the shiny powders or iridescent or metallic. And that is where you're gonna see the highlighted and the low lighted areas you'll see in through here I applied some yellow on the top of the cheek here creating more of that light or highlighted areas of course we use the darker areas in through here and around the here and then in through this crease line you can you can pretty much see very well where that that color is laid again using it as an undertone I'm not using it as an overall finishing look working it in really well using your um, cotton swabs if you lay down color that's uh, too intense you have to make sure that you work it in really really well because if you do put down too much powder too quickly and you don't work it in right away it will stain the vinyl and it will be really difficult to remove so make sure you do little by little working it in right away and keeping that um that tool whatever you're you're going to ultimately use which i like the cotton swabs in a constant motion i'm not, and once i lay it down i'm i'm moving 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 until i get the color where i need it to be otherwise it's it's going to be a nightmare but here we are this is where we're at so far and then I'm gonna keep on plugging away and I will get back to you guys on the finished look as we get closer along again if you have not subscribed to our channel please make sure you do so so you can hear all the next um, steps on the tips and tricks that we figure out that have been working well for us or hopefully that will work well for you 
Uh, thanks again for supporting Elsa's Nursery and following us along. If you have any questions, feel free to send me an email or you can uh, comment on the post and I will certainly get back to you as quickly as possible. And you guys have a great rest of your day. Thanks again.